Today, we are doing it slightly differently. We are in the headquarters of a leading building efficiency products manufacturer and supplier in Australia, the Proclima. And we are so lucky we have an expert from Proclima going to talk to us about what is wrong with our current um, construction method and what should be done to greatly improve the performance and longevity of our buildings. I'm going to introduce Jesse Clark from Proclima. Good day, Jesse. Thanks, Joseph. So this is basically where we're looking at, regardless of that, but the two systems on the side are Proclima systems. So everything we do is, yes, in relationship to energy efficiency, yep. but basically everything we do is around moisture management. Okay. So it's dealing with those, what the regulators would label unintended consequences of energy efficiency regulations. Wow, and unintended consequences. <laughs> so. What are the unintended consequences of our current construction method looks similar to this one here? Yeah, so, so basically, there's a, I mean, what's happened over the years is a whole evolution in uh, energy efficiency. Like every country in the world, you start with nothing, yeah. uh, start with no insulation. Uh, and That's then, how we begin, practically, <laughs> nothing. Basically, you end up, you started with a stud wall. We used to just yep. build building systems with the cladding on the outside, plasterboard on the inside, yep. and happy days. Then along as history progressed um, at some point in history building wraps were used uh, to help weatherproof the building so when we're talking about building wraps we're talking about originally paper-based uh, building wraps this is not paper-based but originally they were paper-based bitumen impregnated whatnot to to be provide a waterproof layer or oh. more waterproof layer behind the cladding okay and in, in evolution they started to evolve and the building wraps changed so we began like um, wax paper like a bakery to wrap our house? Asc essentially, yeah, a waterproof paper. Yeah. Um, and that's the, the bitumen that was impregnated into that, made it waterproof. Yeah. Uh, and then some point in history, one of the large product manufacturers came up with this great idea that they would put an aluminium surface uh, onto those paper products. Yeah. So then the aluminium surface was put on there to improve energy efficiency. And that was all about radiant heat transfer through the construction oh. system. So. Is it only happening in Australia or was it a trend globally to put um, aluminium paper? No, this paper? is a global, was, is, was a global trend. Mm. Uh, most of the world's moving away from it. Uh, but it was a global trend because it was originally a 1954 research paper that uh, came out. Cause war, from, low cost, yeah, high performance. From the US, yeah. uh, Robinson and Powell, which came up with this research that looked at um, reflective air gaps. So this reflective re infrared reflective surface, when it's facing into the stud bay with no insulation in there, yeah. you reduce the radiant heat transfer through that gap. And the research paper was able to attribute R values to that air gap. And so the manufacturer said, okay, let's put foil all over our building wraps. Oh. And they started putting foil on the building wraps and okay, great, it made the buildings more energy efficient. Uh, but that's only the beginning of the story. Yeah. Back then it works. Back then it worked. And because what, you had, what changes make it not as good now? Well, that's what you're looking at here is that sort of first evolution of where you had this foil in the um, stud bay. So the, the foil uh, reflects the heat or uh, stops that radiant heat transfer through the system. But because there was no fibrous insulation in there, this foil surface stayed warmer. So oh. it wasn't that good. So condensation at won't happen or the So there was no condensation because it was the heat from inside could travel through and keep yeah. it warm enough. Uh, and buildings were super leaky as well, air leaky. So then we started going, well, okay, we've got to have energy efficiency. We've got to improve this. The rest of the world's doing it. We're you know, 20, 30 years behind. Oh, we must do it too. So we started insulating our buildings. 2004, 2005. Started That's the five-star era. Yes, so five-star, keep increasing it, putting more insulation in our yeah. um, construction systems. So we added insulation. Yep. So that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. So we're adding more insulation to make our buildings more energy efficient. And what this does, it actually means that because the insulation is holding more heat back in the, back building, in the building, so it's doing its job, it works, yeah. insulation does work, it, does, it holds the energy back, keeps, it means you lend less energy to heat the building, but that means the external surface is colder. It's more close to the outdoor temperature. That's right. It's more close to the outside. It's closer to the outside temperature. So then, um, yeah, we've we're, we're got a more energy efficient building, but we start creating this 
plane that is nice and smooth. And because this foil is 100% non-porous, it's, yeah. it's it, the first thing that's going to happen is it, any elevation in humidity next to a cold surface yeah. happens like a beer glass. It's yeah. like getting condensation all over it. If you get enough condensation, it will start to run vertically down that. Back so of that, if um, we wrap. have some kind of X-ray vision, we'll see this surface look like the single glaze window on the inside in winter morning. Exactly. Full of water and, exactly. And, and when and when you look at those windows, because it's the most obvious place that yeah. you see condensation occurring. Um, so everyone sees that in winter. It happens. I mean, basically every house I've lived in that had single glass, yeah. um, it starts running down. But you know that it gets the, the like little droplets all over yeah. it. Eventually, it hits a threshold where there's enough condensate or grammage yeah. per meter squared that it just starts to run down. Yep. And that's when you start getting issues like bottom plates rotting out and rotten all this, out, all this mold, weird stuff and yeah. mold forming around. Um, skirting boards and yep. you wonder why. So the energy efficiency is a great thing, but we have to uh, improve the methods of building the to materials we use. To adopt the whole scenario. That's right, to, yeah. to take account for not just the energy, the heat transfer, but also the effects on the moisture balance in the structure. Okay. And like I said, Proclimber specializes in moisture management of the building envelope, building structure. Keep it dry, stays healthy, stays durable, stays energy efficient. That's great, but I heard some builders say, well, it's not, it's not too hard to deal with the issue that you mentioned. We just need to keep enough gaps on the sucking to ventilate this cavity to reduce the condensation. So, Does it work? Well, <laughs> so that's the thing. So historically, we before we even started properly sealing up those external wraps, mm. um, then there was a lot of air leakage just because they're flapping in the wind and you get air going everywhere and yes, it dries things out, but it's not really doing its job for energy efficiency. So if we really want to get that performance out of our buildings, we have to start to lock down that air. Yep. And that means building more airtight buildings. Yeah. But that's only looking at air tightness from an energy efficiency perspective. Because the other thing that's happening is if I get a building wrap, the whole purpose of this wrap, why, why were these wraps ever put in the there first in place. the first place? Yeah. It wasn't energy efficiency, it was for weatherproofing. So to this, stop the rain water going in. Exactly. So these are sarking. Yeah or traditionally called sarkin, yeah. and sarkin by definition is a layer that will safely drain water to the outside of the building. Yeah. So we've got these building wraps that are designed for weather tightness. Yeah. For, to be weather tight, the more airtight that is, the more weather tight that is. is. Yeah. So we've got these two overlapping requirements, which mm -hmm. is to get a more weather tight building, you seal this up. Yep. And then in other parts of the world, and what's starting to be used in Australia as well, as well is the term weather resistive barrier. And weather resistive barrier implies that this has to be weather or stop the weather getting in. And weather is the formation or is wind pressure combined yep. with water. Mm. You put those two things together, wind pressure is what drives water through small gaps and cracks through your structure. And so the more wind and the more rain you've got in any given climate, the more likely your building's going to leak. But if that's airtight, it's watertight. Mm. So if we're sealing this up from water tightness, now we create the other problem. Yep. Which we go to the inside. The inside, you've got condensation. We say, well, now we've got what's happening inside the building, the internal moisture sources. Yeah. You and me talking, breathing, yep. expelling moisture, sweating because we're getting a little bit where hot. Where we cook, <laughs> where we make coffee, all got yeah. moisture produced. The coffee, cooking, making the tea, making the coffee. Um, so then the moisture comes through and potentially condenses on the um, cold surface. So that's where we're at. So we're at this point where we've got this with the plasterboard laying and say, well, okay, so if plasterboard's here, how does the humidity get through into that? Well, plasterboard itself is a highly vapor permeable, permeable material. material. Yeah. And then you say, well, what's vapor permeance? What's vapor permeability? What, what are you talking about? It is the effect of when you've got high humidity on one yeah. side of a material, uh, high temperature, high humidity, and lower temperature, lower humidity on the other side, yeah. over time, water vapor will actually diffuse through those materials. Yeah. And plasterboard doesn't have much resistance at all. Nope, not at so all. So that water vapor actually goes straight through the plasterboard, but even more so when you've got power sockets, light switches, yep. everything else, there's air gaps that just take it straight yep. by air transportation. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, I mean, the thing with plasterboard is it's, it's a great product, quick. I mean, it was, that's why it became yeah. widely used. Uh, but paper facings and anything that has is made from cellulose. So natural fibers. You just soak up water. Soak up water, but it's a food source for mold. Mm. So timber itself can be a food source for mold. Gypsum, gypsum. Um, paper on paper. gypsum board can be food source for mold. 
Um, any sort of uh, paper used in any building wraps can also be food source for mold. Yep. So that's um, what we've got to look out for. So when you've got the combination of high humidity and something that mold likes to eat, yep. then you've got the perfect recipe or perfect environment for, for mold growth. Yep. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Yep, it's, it's, it's the worst news for asthma sufferer like myself. Yeah. Okay, so this more traditional sucking system has no place to be integrated into the modern energy efficient envelope. Is it correct? Well, that's right. It, it, it's looking that way and it's yeah. going that way because what's happened in the building code uh, in the latest revision, yeah. 2019, climate zone 6, 7 and 8 must have vapor permeable wraps on the outside of insulation layers. Is there any way we can convert it. that into a vapor permeable? Well, I mean, there is. It, it's, if you take the, the biggest screw you can find yeah. and then you have a vapor permeable wrap. But is it still performing what is original well, intended function? <laughs> I don't think so. So the problem now is it's not a weather resistant barrier and water is going to go straight through it. So that's a macro, what I call a macro porous membrane. Yep. So the answer is a big cross across. There's no longer place for this sucking. Throw it out of the windows. Okay, now come to the real thing. What should happen now? Explain, so, try to introduce us on the ProClimate system. Okay, so what ProClimate does, the first thing what a building needs to be is, is weather tight. Yeah. Uh, and that's what this external wrap is all about, yep. Extasana, I mean, then it goes on the outside of the building. Yep. ProClimate Solitex Extasana. And what I was talking about before is the um, weather resistive barrier means that it needs to be a barrier to air. Yep. So it has to take the wind pressure. Yep. Um, so it can't have gaps and cracks in it. And it has to be waterproof. So the membrane is a water barrier. It's yep. a very high water barrier. This, is, this one will take a huge amount of water pressure. Yep. To, well, actually, it will never leak through the membrane itself. Um, the, the secret, though, is how you make the junctions between yes, I can see all the different There's materials. something that you will never see with the... Um, traditional sucking system. I've never seen joints like that. Yeah, so this, so what we basically need to do is yeah, seal up all the junctions between different materials. And in this case, what one of the main failure points that always happens in buildings when you're talking about wall systems is how that wall connects into other materials like the windows. Yeah. And this is fully, well, as close as you're going to get to airtight tape. Yeah. Um, so it's highly airtight, which means it's highly waterproof. And when you put this through the full scale, large, large scale test in, that's the first thing that you will learn, that an airtight WRB is a watertight so WRB. practically all this taping is replacing the traditional flashing around windows? Uh, no, <laughs> not exactly. It's part of the secondary water oh, barrier that's a system. Secondary so you water still barrier. need a deflection pathway. Yep. Ah. So you're still going to have a cladding sitting out. Basically, your cladding is going to sit off, generally out of the way or a little bit off your, yep. um, off your membrane. So when you have a cladding system, it will sit on your battens, yep. and this will be large. Yep. You'll always, what we recommend is the best way is to have a ventilated cavity because that allows the water liquid vapor water to be yep. expelled. Mm. Allow it in the bottom, allow it out the top. So have an opening at the top of the wall and an opening yep. at the bottom of the wall. Then you have to deflect water that's going to hit the window, drain yep. down the window. It always has to be deflected back out to the front of the cladding. Okay. So that's some architectural detail required. But that's, there's many ways you can do that depending on the different types of window systems you and use. And how does the whip holes in the window frame work with the taping? So the weep holes, obviously you never tape over the weep holes, yeah. but the weep holes should drain out onto the flashing material, depending mm -hmm. on the detail you've used. In this case, the flashing could be um, basically sealed up to the front of it and flash back out onto the front surface of the wall cladding and the weep holes would just drain yep, off. So the all the liquid water so would just all the get liquid out. water always push back out towards the cladding surface onto the front surface of the cladding. Okay. So that's essentially what the pro climber weather resistant barrier system is. And, it's and, and this watertight. material allows the water vapor to come to the outside. That's right. So now we're talking about the concept where it was like, well, hang on, 
if we started making our buildings more airtight because they've got to be more waterproof mm -hmm. and a more airtight building is a more waterproof building, we create that potential other problem where water vapour from inside the building gets trapped at the back of the membrane. Yep. So this is vapour permeable. So the extasana is a vapour permeable membrane but non-porous, non completely non-porous yep. membrane. The water vapour is transported through the material, yep. but through the molecular structure of the material. Um, unlike some other products that we cover in earlier videos that when we use a garden hose to spray on it, water just goes straight through. So those are nothing compared to this high quality product we have here. So all this material will be exposed to the element during construction. Do the builder need any special treatment? Not really. So, so basically what our membranes are engineered. They've got a lot of engineering that goes into the chemistry on, on the makeup of the, the polymers that go into it. And part of that is UV stability. So when it's exposed to UV, they don't deteriorate. Um, so they've got one of the best UV ratings on the market, 90 days for the Solitex Extasana. Uh, so that is very good by market terms. But the, one of the issues is also around early closing, uh, where the expectation that this is going to be 100% watertight during construction, which it can be. But if you really want to do that, then it's systems like this where you need also other products like the um, Tescon Nadec product, which is a butyl tape, which can fully seal every single penetration. And it's a butyl that will, um, when you screw through it, seal up the screw holes. So during construction, it's not 100% weathertight, but it is pretty good. And UV stability is, is great, fantastic. Oh, Not so a problem. what is so, the sample in your hand? <laughs> that's right. So what it all comes down to is a technology in the products. So the technology that's used is basically the interlayer, the functional film that's used in the center of the two pr protective layers on the outside. Mm. This is what's known as a TEEE layer. So it's a thermoplastic elastomer ether ester, uh, which is sounds very, yes, <laughs> sounds pretty crazy, but it, it's a different technology to a lot of the other membranes on the market. And that is basically bonds the layers together under high temperature. And because they're bonded under high temperature, then it's going to take a lot of heat for it to delaminate or debond in, in situ. So that means it can be used behind really hot claddings. So even when you get to the roofing, or if you're talking about metal sheet cladding on your wall, even if it's a dark color, 70, not 80 a degrees. So it's not, not a problem with temperature. And UV is, is excellent. Yeah. So Vir it's all virtually you can put it on the solar collector. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. So it comes it basically, and yes, it's, it's a well-engineered product, and it all comes down to the stuff that you can't see. Yeah. So it looks the same as many other products, but it's not the same. So um, in a nutshell, you're putting on a Gore-Tex jacket on the whole house instead of just a stuffy windbreaker. Exactly. It's a UV stabilized Gore-Tex. Wow, <laughs> nice. Well, this is a like-for-like -like replacement of socking. But if we want to improve the condition further, is there anything else we need to change in the whole wall design construction? What about on the inside? What actually do we need to do yeah. extra? Exactly. So, so you're absolutely right. This is a like-for-like -like replacement for sarkin. Mm -hmm. We don't like the term sarkin. We like to call it a membrane, membrane because sarkin yeah. has connotations of the aluminium yeah. and we don't want the aluminium mm -hmm. on there. So basically, um, yeah, so, so this can be used to meet building code requirements around weatherproofing yeah. and everything else. But then what happens on the inside of the building to make the system even more durable yeah. and to make sure the system stays drier because we've made that more airtight building is to utilize a membrane on the inside of the structure Okay, well. that's a good idea. Let's move to see what is happening on the inside. Okay, Jesse. This is the inside of the stud wall. It looks so different from what I normally see in construction site. It tried right. to explain to me what, what, what it is. That's right. So this is a relatively new concept for Australia, uh, particularly in the mainstream. So this is an intelligent air barrier. Um, that this goes on the inside of the construction system. And what that does is essentially stops water vapor going into the structure. So that means if you've got any of that indoor activities happening that people like to do, cooking, cleaning, bathing, expelling moisture, it doesn't go into your structure and reach your cold surfaces on so the inside. So we still keep it always in the warm zone, so That's to right. speak. That's right. So it keeps the indoor air where it's meant to be on the inside of the building. Uh, but in doing that, the, the, the function of this membrane, it has what we call an intelligent um, vapor permeability. It changes its vapor permeability depending on what's happening around it. And that's really important to the function of this, uh, this layer on the inside. Mm. 
And you need to go through the same taping around windows? So, exactly. So, so on this case, if you're going to try and stop humidity in the air, so water vapor in the air from going into your structure, you have to have an airtight layer. Because if you're relying on the plasterboard to try and do that, you've got penetrations everywhere, and it's also highly vapor permeable, go straight through it. So this one, if it's got to be airtight and stop that water vapor diffusing or air transporting that water vapor to the outer layers. So the way you seal this in and the tapes and the seals and making all that airtight is criti critically important to the um, vapor control function of that layer as well. Okay, so does it mean that we need to have all the corn juice for electrical and data embedded before we put the membranes on or what is the more convenient solution? So that's a great question because basically what traditionally would be done is you have all the services running directly through the center of the studs. Yep. So you just drill holes through electrical hmm. cables, piping, etc. In this case, what we do is we take everything out of the stud base. So we take all those services, electrical and plumbing, out of the stud base. That means the insulation has its own place. And we want its own place for the insulation because then it doesn't get compressed. That's and that good. gives a perfect insulation layer, and that's what we're after for thermal performance. Then the services, we put battens on and the services can be run in a cavity created by the battens. So we've got electrical and plumbing running through that cavity, and then the plasterboard goes over the top of that. Okay. And all the services run in, in that. So each function got its own zone to stay with. Exactly. And it also helps to protect the membrane from being cut open by the trays, putting the services in. Exactly. You've got the exactly. So if, if I was to try and run the services through the studs with this Intello layer, the issue is I'm going to have to bring them back out because yeah. otherwise I can't plug my PowerPoint my yeah. stuff into my PowerPoints. So that means it's possible to do, but it's not the preferred solution it's very because fiddly. you'll end up cutting holes in your Intello, yeah. trying to put in a special socket. Back in box? Back in, yeah, yeah, a um, Insta box we call it, and we do have the products for that, but it's not the preferred solution because yeah. it's pretty fiddly to get right. Yeah. So it's far better and easier just to do this. You get a far better outcome from uh, the air barrier if you do it this way. Okay, but does this solution, the whole package, apply to entire Australia, or would it need um, local adaptation? Basically, this system works almost everywhere in Australia. So it's a very robust system because you're protecting the structure from external moisture, the rain ingress on the outside, yep. and you're protecting it from the internal water vapor coming into the system. So you're protecting it from both sides. And then that the vapor permeability on the outside and the intelligent vapor control function on the internal means that you don't trap moisture. And it works all the way up for most of the building code climate zones. Apart from climate zone one, you start to need to think about specialist solutions on how you're going to stop the a sheer amount of water vapor in the external oh, air. the highly in. humid and warm yes. weather like Townsville, yeah. Darwin, yeah. those yeah. areas. So, so from, a, um, from a building physics perspective, um, the top end of Australia is um, very exciting because there's lots of water vapor in the air. This system is pretty robust. This system is, to put it in a simpler word, is from Brisbane all the way down to Alpine region, down to Tasmania, yeah. no problem. Exactly. And it works whether you've got a 90 mil stud or if you want to go to higher performance structures with 140 mil studs and put more insulation in there, yeah. the system still works. Or can it be done like a 90 mil stud and then a secondary stud with additional insulation while you're running um, cables and services in between? So it's possible to add additional insulation on the inside but you start changing the whole balance of the structure. So there's a limit. So sometimes some people like to insulate in this service cavity, 40 mils, yep. 40 odd mils on the inside. If I start putting too much on the inside. Then it becomes this cold surface. Then it becomes a cold yep. surface, exactly. So, but but that's, that would be extreme. So yep. generally filling this service cavity is okay too. So you can put an extra 40 mils, another R1. A bit extra is not bad. Okay, Jesse. This is the solution for far north Queensland type of climate? Uh, yeah, pretty much. So what happens when we get into this warm, humid air? Um, you've got a lot of moisture stored in the air outside of your building, and it's cool, generally air-conditioned, cool on the inside. So what's happening now is we've, we've got um, air conditioning, which is reaching 100% market penetration, as in almost every single house yeah. has air conditioning. Uh, so we need to be aware that if we're creating that cold surface, cold plasterboard surface on the inside, what happens to all that water vapour in the air? Mm. And we've got to stop that water vapour from reaching that um, 
that cold past the board surface. Yeah. And that's what this is all about. Yeah. So this is different to the Solitex X Dasana. This is Proclimber DA, and it's basically got a higher vapor resistance on the membrane. It's not super high. It's not like a class one vapor barrier, like aluminum foil. It's, it's not only... like a plastic. No, and it's not like plastics. It's only as vapor uh, resistive as it needs to be to get a good outcome. And the reason that is, is because it, in general, you want construction systems to be as vapor permeable as possible yep. and only as vapor resistive as necessary. Yep. And the reason for that is because when you got rain and you get accidental water leaks, because I'm not perfect, the designer's not perfect, the engineer's not perfect, mm -hmm. no one's perfect. So if any water does get into the system, always having the maximum amount of vapor permeance lets it dry out. Yep. So this is higher resistance to stop that general amount of water vapor pushing in through to the plasterboard. Mm -hmm. But there's a secret to making it work. <laughs> Whoa. So, so what is happening? So that's exactly right. So here's, <laughs> this is the secret, right? So to, make a, to get a vapor um, control layer to work, something that's trying to stop water vapor going somewhere else, it has to be airtight. Because if it's not airtight, what's going to happen? The vapor will follow the air. The water vapor is going to go, thank you very much. Yeah. And it's going to go up here, get to your plasterboard. Yeah, they go and then go inside. As soon as it gets to your cold plasterboard that's nice and air conditioned, yeah. then you drive up the humidity, drive up the moisture content of the plasterboard, and you get high surface humidity on the plasterboard. And if you remember, I lost my plasterboard sample, but the plasterboard has a paper face in. Yep. So you've got a perfect food source for mold, for mold on the inside of your building. So taping it up, sealing it all up, but also around all the penetrations. If you have any um, joists, any yep. you know, cantilevers, any roof trusses, it all has to be sealed up. Yep. So airtight exterior for the tropics is probably the, the most important thing that we have to do, make this airtight. Uh, and then we get into, well, also the, the other function of it, which yep. is obviously the waterproofing mm -hmm. function. So the weather resistance of that external wrap. So the engineering that goes into our product. So this is a tropical uh, product, UV stabilized, but really when you want this system to work, you've got to tape and seal it. And it's the way that the tapes are applied that is critical to making them work because they're pre pressure sensitive glues or pressure sensitive adhesives on the tapes. Then they have to be pressed down as they're applied and that activates the glue, which means that it's going to stick there. So we've tested this in Germany for a 100-year adhesion and um, yeah, basically passed a 100-year accelerated aging test on the adhesion of these um, tapes. So have we covered all the system that you guys have? Uh, no, because basically what all these are all flexible membranes. That's what we do as ProClimber. We do pliable building membranes according to the standard. That's what the standard's called. Uh, it's called underlays sometimes, flexible membranes, whatever you want to call it. But they're weatherproofing or more traditionally sark in. Sark in. And that's what it's there for, to drain water yep. to the outside of the building. But what happens in systems like this is when you've got claddings on your system, they go, this is a drained and ventilated system. We always recommend that because you get wind pressure on the outside of the building. If any water gets past your cladding, through any imperfections, then you've got that secondary barrier to protect it. But what makes that system work is that being airtight, that barrier. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it can drain out of that system, but the air that's generated up that cavity dries it out, right? But when you've got pressure on your building, what's happening when you've got a flexible underlay is when you start getting to high wind pressures, it can push through. Mm -hmm. So you start getting flex on that. It's, it's, it's not a secret. I mean, that's, that's what happens. Yep. It's science. It's nature. So it's going to push on that. So then you start saying, well, okay, once I start getting up to higher wind zones, then I might need additional... Um, support? Additional support. Additional mm -hmm. elements in that system to take the wind pressure along with the weather-resistant barrier. Oh, can you show us an example? Yes, I can. Oh, you want to see let's that? Let's go. Okay, this looks exactly like this system for most of the Australia. What's the difference? Well, so it does. It looks like the Solitex X Dasana, but this one is called Solitex X Dasana Adhero. And there's one fundamental difference that this is a fully peel and stick membrane, meaning the whole back of the membrane is adhered with an adhesive. Oh. And what that means is when you've got a rigid substrate, like here. Oh, it doesn't move. It doesn't move. So now we've got a system a membrane that can be applied over any rigid substrate 
and take large amounts of wind pressure. So we're talking about systems that work in, start going up to the cyclonic regions. Yeah. And we're talking about systems that when you're talking about more high rise buildings, apartments and things like that. So that can stop the membrane deflecting and it will be, because it's fully peel and stick, no penetrations required during install. So your basis that you start with is a zero penetration, perfect weather resistant barrier. Uh, and you still would overlap in the junctions to maintain the sealed all around. Exactly. So this is the overlap here, 150 mil overlap as per a normal membrane. Oh, I can't even see there's an overlap there. Yeah. That's so nicely so, done. So there's, yeah, we had a good installer on this one. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so, so it overlaps there and then, yeah, basically it's as waterproof as you're going to get. Okay, so it stopped wind getting into the building at all. Yeah. And while we are on the topic of wind, what does the term wind washing mean? So wind washing is the effect when you get any gaps or cracks in the outside, or, so in this external weather resistant barrier, whether it be in the, the lower regions of Australia when using just a normal extrasana product, yep. using a proclimate DA in the tropics, whatever it is, if air can get through the gaps and cracks, then it can start to take energy out of your insulation and reduce the R value of that insulation. Oh. So that's what we're trying to avoid. But by having a weather tight, it means it's airtight, which means that the wind washing is also stopped. Uh, so wind bypassing the insulation, taking exactly. energy all out, that's what they mean by wind washing. That's it. So it's, it's basically reducing the effect of the insulation, wind washing. And wow. that will not happen once you've got a weather tight, airtight WRV on the outside. Excellent. So we can handle high rise wind, we can handle cyclone with your product. That's correct. So the thing about this product though is because we talked earlier about the um, aluminium foils and because you've got a really high vapour resistance on the aluminium layer, mm. it traps water behind it. What's really important is what substrate this adhero is stuck onto. Oh, yeah. So if you take, for example, a, it can go onto a, a like a timber um, bracing board. So a lot of buildings will have timber over the studs to, to brace it. Yep. Uh, so it can use that as the rigid substrate. Uh, but that, depending on what type of, if it's a plywood. Oh, what type of glue they use. Yeah, then the glue they use to glue the layers together mm. may or may not be vapor permeable, depending on what part of the world it comes from. Yep. But in this particular case, you've got one, two, three, four, five ply. So you've got four lines of glue in there. So each line of glue is potential vapor resistance. So you need to be aware of that. But it's not just the number of glues or lines of glue in there. It's also the thickness of the product. Yep. So if you have a thicker product, you've got more lines of glue, obviously, more um, plies. Yep. So they have different vapor resistance. That can block the water vapor coming out through the system, even though you've got a vapor permeable wrap. Uh, to put it to a dumbest example, if you put this vapor permeable membrane on a piece of glass, it won't magically become vapor permeable. Exactly. Or if you have a metal back pan, which yeah. often gets used in the commercial high rise sector and put this over the top, it's not going to save you. It's not. The metal back pan is going to blind the, the system. Yeah, it's just going to trap the moisture. And what's coming onto the market now is a lot of uh, fiber cement wraps. Yep. They call it resistive air barrier. Um, but these fiber cement wraps are for the outside of the building, but the adhero product can go directly over the wrap as well. So basically then any joints that are formed in the RAB get fully covered yep. and you end up with a system that looks like this. A continuous system. A continuous weather tight layer. Yep. And depending on the manufacturer, the RABs are vapor permeable to an extent, mm -hmm. uh, but depending on the manufacturer, they vary slightly yep. on the vapor permeability there. Mm. But the overall vapor permeance is what matters. Okay. And that's not the end of the story because there's other products on the market now, like exterior gypsum boards. Yep. And this, what we've got to be careful of is this is fundamentally different to a normal interior gypsum board. Yeah. And we talked earlier about um, paper facings. Yep. See that? There's no paper on it. So because there's no paper on it, there's no food source for mold. Yep. And it's also a highly permeable, gypsum itself is highly permeable. Yeah. That's why we need the Intello on the inside of the building because the internal plasterboard doesn't do anything for you. But this side lets it out of the outside of the structure. But would it get mushy when it get No, the because it doesn't trap, doesn't trap the moisture. Ah, so this they still got a different lets the water on. vapor out. Ah. And that then can go on the outside of the building. And ProClimber um, also has a solution of putting the adhero over the whole thing to make it even more waterproof. So there's a whole lot of options for um, high pressure systems now on the market that are really waterproof and vapor permeable. Okay. 
So if you have any needs to put any of the vapor protection on your wall, if you still get confused after watching this video, I can feel for you, but let's ring these guys up, ring Proclimber. Thanks a lot, Joseph. Oh, das ist gut, ja. Das ist schön. Mm.